amongst other things that are far past the belief of these people, man. That's why when, when, they, when we say Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are gods, man. The Lord said it out of his mouth, you are gods. But because of our disobedience, we have to be, we have to die like men. It's like, it's like, it's like. Verse 7, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now, Jake in this world just want to have something, some kind of substance. He don't even want a title at this point. He might have some ambitious Jakes that say, I want to be a king or I'm a king. The Lord said we're gods, man. Anything that we could have thought was success in this life, the Lord exceeds that greatly. But like anything in life, you have to sacrifice to get it, man. Which is what Yahweh Shah was preaching, man. He was saying that there, there has to come a sacrifice, man. You can't, and that's what Jake wanted. Jake wanted the quick, the quick fix, man. Jake wanted the microwave dinner, man. But the oven dinner is always better, man. But the Yahweh Shah knew that from the beginning, man. He knew that this flesh loves comfort. So we always wanted our blessing like that, man. Right. But now we're going through the oven, man. And when you when you cooking something in the oven, you go check on it. You sitting down, you, you looking at the clock, you making sure you ain't burnt it. That's how we waiting on the kingdom, man. It's a nice slow cook, but once we get it, you ain't even gonna think about all that time you was waiting and sitting by and being all impatient. That's gonna be an afterthought when you in a, a mortal body, man. With endless, endless potential, man. This is Zechariah chapter 13 and verse 9. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is my power. And that's why the Lord put us through all of these trials, man. Because we lack the humility, man. We had the gift of the law. We had the understanding that we were promised great things, but we didn't have the humility with it, man. That's why the Lord had to completely snatch our heritage from us, man. Because you had Jake in captivity, and you know wicked Jake, man. Once he institutionalized, he's like, man, I could do a little 30 years. A couple generations, my son, son, be in the, we be back in Jerusalem in no time. Probably had an understanding of, of reincarnation. Like, yeah, I'll be back in uh, Israel probably in about 70 years, y'all boys, uh, you know. You know how Jake get, dog. But the Lord wasn't playing those games this time, man. Jake always thought he was smarter, man, but the Lord has been the smartest, man. He knew this move before we made it, man. When Adam made that mistake in the garden, it, it really wasn't a mistake, it was intentional. But the Lord already knew gen how this whole thing was going to play out, man. That's why I said, oh, it's like, you got it. Now, you're right, though, because they always say you never realize that you miss something until you lose it, man. And the Most High, when we had his name, the name Israel, Yasha Allah, the prince or the son of the power, we profaned that name, man. He snatched that shit from us, and now guess what? Through the spirit, we miss it, even the two-thirds. That's why the scripture says, Romans 10 and 2, that they are, my people have a zeal for the Lord, but not according to knowledge, man. They spiritually yearning for that name back, but only a select few, namely the 144,000 in the elect, are going to get that name back in the kingdom of heaven, man. Because, you know what I'm saying? Because the Lord said that anybody that go through any other way is a thief and a robber, man. And our people always wanted their, their, uh, their crown back, so to speak, or their wings back, so to speak. It says that we were angels that left our first estate, man. We were always, we were always that. That's why our people always cleave unto a royalty and, and expensive things. And, a, and a, a superior complex, which is why the Lord had to destroy us to the point that he had to destroy us. It looked harsh, but you got to imagine how proud our people were in that day, man. That the Lord had to break us down to this decimal, man. The Lord had to break us down to the, the very atoms that make us, man. Because we were proud, man. And the Lord brought, bringing us through the fire is meant to humble us, man. Yahweh Shah came and he's the inheritor of all things, man. We're joint heirs on him. We in the club because we in the club with him. Don't get, it, don't get it twisted. We were promised this, but we're getting in the club because of him, man. Man, this is a beautiful thing, man. This is Proverbs chapter 16. Oh, slide, I got this precept. Uh, oh, go ahead. What you said. This oh. is uh, 
Sirach chapter 11, verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction, and in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. Uh, man, because the brother said it beautifully, man. Our people didn't appreciate the gift that we were given, man. It said, just run a uh, wax fat and kick, man. Soon as we got all the substance that the Lord promised us, man, we let that wicked heart get the best of us. Now, it was meant to be like that, man, but we're supposed to consider that. As hopeful elect, we're, we're witnesses of Yahweh Bashim Shah's mercy, man. Got it all. This is uh, Baruch chapter 4, verse 8. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up, and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. Yeah, so that's why we got pushed out of our homeland, man, because we disrespected our homeland. That's why we lost our title as the sons of God, because we disrespected that title, man. That's why the Lord did what he did to us, man, because our people were proud, man. And we had to go through this refining process. It was it was completely necessary, man. Yahweh Shai had to go through his baptism, man. How much more so the, uh, the hopeful elect? How much more so the nation of Esau, man? The nation of Edom, man. And, but see, that's the that's the balance of the scales, too. Because that shows you the Lord is, is uh, he can also judge unmercifully, man. They said that he, he, uh, he received no mercy, though he sought it carefully with tears, man. So the Lord's got that balance to show you that he can be merciful, but he not soft either, man. Don't ever get it twisted, man. And that's why we out here proclaiming this, because they got our power twisted, man. They got our Lord and Savior twisted, and they got Yahweh Bash, they got Yahweh Bash shot twisted, man. And death is gonna greet them, man. All of the proud, man. Death is gonna greet them, and they very mind is gonna torment them, man. The elect are raising up, and their frequency is is raising up, man. Brothers is, is able to put curses on heathens and, and see it play out. The spiritual powers are coming, man. But it starts with your belief, man. It starts with your faith, man. Your ability to push past what you see right now. And really live and embody what Yahweh Bashimi al Shah promised us, man. We're rehearsing the righteous acts until we're made manifest sons of power in our flesh, man. In that day, there's going to be a forgetfulness of our affliction, man. In that day, you're not going to care about these heathens looking at us crazy, man. Because a heathen not going to be able to look you in your eye in that day, man. This is small change to us, man. To the Lord, it's small change, but to us, this should be small change. This is pennies, man, compared to the, the, the future lifetimes, endless lifetime that you are promised, man. The Lord, uh, can somebody get uh, Wisdom of Solomon uh, 2 and 23? You got it, uh. This is uh, Sirach chapter 2, verse 4. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully, and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. For gold is tried in the fire, and acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. Now in the, in the world, the real ones is the ones that stay down with you through whatever. You don't think the Lord requires that, man? He the one gave that spirit to you. You don't think he requires that of you? You holding on to this one lifetime for dear life, and the Lord got eternity promised to you, man. Think about how you how Bashim Al Shah looking at you, man. We're meant to get weak because it's a it's a checks and balance system, man. When we get weak, when we're chastened, it reminds us that we're not in our rest yet, man. But then Yahweh Bashim Al Shah sent us that comfort, man. Through small little gifts or spiritual uh, enlightenment, man. Faith. But look, Yahweh Bashim Al Shah requires the real ones to ride through whatever, man. Which is why we're in this lower state. And that's that's a beautiful precept the brother brought out because it shows you that you gotta have patience right now. He's testing your patience, man. The Lord giving you the kingdom ain't a benefit to him, it's a, it's a pleasure. This is absolutely a benefit for us, man. If Jake told you, if, the, if the, your job told you you gotta work 58 hours, you gotta wear that 58 hours, man. The Lord giving you eternity and all he asking you to do is have faith and be diligent, man. And rehearse the righteous acts, man. This is Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 1. Be not thou envious against the evil men, neither desire to be with them. 
Because why would you be envious of a future uh, nationality that's going to be exterminated? They blessed right now for what? 30, uh, 30, 40 years, a lifetime of, of 40, 50 years. Our people live 969 years, man. And they ain't have kids till they was like 500. You think we, you think you should, you shouldn't be envious of the heathens, man. Chiefly Esau, man. The man's inheritance and legacy is gonna be wiped completely out, man. You can't get around that, man. His pride is going is gonna be his downfall, man. Jake don't even feel right being a proud demon, man. It's an act that Jake gotta physically put on, man. Our people have become just like their uh just like their oppressors, man. Verse 2. For their heart studyeth destruction and their lips talk of mischief. Verse 3. Through wisdom. Is it a house built and by understanding is it established? Ooh, somebody give wisdom to Solomon, I think it's 6 and 26 or 27. Uh, uh, wisdom uh, beginneth the, uh, begin the kingdom. Because the Lord is establishing us forever. But that has to start with wisdom. That has to start with a change of the mind and the spirit of our people. Until that is changed, nothing that we could get of substance in this world will ever get us out of the predicament that we're in, man. Which is why we've been backed into a corner so deep that it's going to take Yahweh Bashim al to get us out of it, man. Because if it was any other way, Jacob finds some other excuse to put the uh, credit on himself and not our power, man. But wisdom brings brings a kingdom, man. Wisdom is going to bring immortality. Oh, you got that free up? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 23. For power created man to be mortal and made him to be the image of his own eternity. So the Lord's original intention for us was to be immortal anyway, man. Death in itself is a punishment of our people, man. Now can you imagine how you were living in the world and now, man? In the world, you thought that you would just be able to live good for 30 years. The Lord said eternity, man. He said from the beginning, his plan was always for us to be an image of his immortality, man. To sit in the passenger seat and watch him drive the ship, man, and admire his moves, man. The same way all of these nations go into a gym to see LeBron perform, man. We were always meant to give glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. To, to spend eternity learning about his works, man. Because it would take an eternity to understand Yahweh Bashim Yahusha. We were. And it's funny that you said that because. We were, me and the Aki were going over this early, man. A woman's glory is her hair, man. A man's glory is his woman. Now, if we're the nation of Israel that's likened onto a woman to the Most High, we're supposed to be his glory, man. Yeah. We're his glory on the face of the earth and the side of the nations, you know? That the other nations could look at us like, yo, we want to be just like them. You know what I'm saying? But right now, we're going through that refining period in order to be that 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 bride, that 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 beautiful bride in the eyes of the Most High Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. So that's powerful what you just said. Right? And what the Lord does, man, is He uses tangible things for us to get to understand it. When you go into our language, we use tangible things to express our thoughts. Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai used. That's why He said He likened us unto a woman. Because when a man thinks about a woman and how much love he got for a woman, he can kind of understand the love Yahweh Bashim Yahusha has for us, even though we could never understand it, man. So the, we were always meant to ride passenger seat forever, man, and admire Yahweh Bashim Yahusha's works, because that's what our brethren in the heavens are doing, man. When uh, John saw the uh, the angel and went to uh, worship him, he said, "I am thy fellow brethren, man." They ain't, he ain't said that to the mother nations, man. We were meant to go through this condition of the battle of being righteous spirits and wicked flesh, man. And our brethren in the heavens are, you best believe they watching, man. It said that they desire to look into what we going through, man. Because they can't go off, man. It's impossible, man. So this is, a, this is the controversy of the universe, man. The actual spiritual uh, sons of God being put in this flesh and having to battle the flesh, man. Some wins, some losses, man. The Meek Mill saying wins and losses. This is the real wins and losses, man. Check our track record. We got more L's than W's, man. 
But that last W is the finishing touch, man. That's the nail in the coffin, man. Once we get that last W, all them L's ain't gonna matter no more, man. You got it, I'm sorry. So, second measure is set before. Verse uh, 26. It says, Then answered he me and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel. For the world hastens fast to pass away and cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous. I'm sorry, uh, cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. For this world is full of un unrighteousness and infirmities. But as concerning the things wherefore thou askest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. Um, this is Sirach chapter 43, verse 29. The Lord is terrible and very great and marvelous in his power. When you glorify, when you glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as you can. For even yet will he far exceed. And when you exalt him, put forth all your strength and be not weary. Yeah, because they think, Salaki, they think the Lord is a fairy tale, man. And the way Christian doctrines uh, spreads uh, the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua is like a fairy tale. No, we talk about the most intellectual uh, understanding being that you could ever comprehend, that you can't comprehend, man. You, uh, you got a question? I'm just curious. Sirach 43. <laughs> What, what chapter is the Bible? Sirach chapter 43, verse 29. It says, For you can never go far enough. 31. Who had seen him, that he might tell us, and who can magnify him as he is? There are yet here greater things than these be. For we have seen but a few of his works. For the Lord hath made all things, and to the godly hath he given wisdom. And it says that the more we search, the more we go marvel, man. That's right. just like when you watch uh, LeBron in his career, you watch him get better and better, man. You marvel at the at the greatness of the skill that he has with a basketball. How much more the creator of all things, man? And we've only seen a little a little of his works, man. We've only seen a few things, man. You got a question? What was that? I have a question for you, sir. Uh, I'm not from here. I'm from Minnesota. Uh, but I was just wondering because I was brought up born again Christian. And I don't know what religion or I don't, it doesn't matter to me at all. You have your fringes. You guys, you guys all seem really... He has his fringes. Really, you, know, like, you guys all seem really, like, faith-believing. So are you Christian oriented or is it... Well, we're not Christians in the modern term, which is the doctrine that uh, Jesus uh, came to save the world. We're Christians in the term according to the scriptures and actual and what the scriptures actually say, which is that the Lord came to save the nation of Israel first and establish them as the nation of rule the planet in righteousness. Okay, so you guys are standing here, are you trying to convert people? Or well what we're doing is we're we're preaching the word because we're part, we're commanded to preach the word and call the remnant of this nation back to their heritage. It says, uh, my lambs will follow me whithersoever I go. So we're preaching the word of the Lord according to what the scriptures say. And through that preaching, the, the elect of this nation is going to hear it and be converted. Well, so we're not. I think it's really wonderful that you guys are so kind to let me in. I stood here as, a, I'm sorry, a white woman. Well, this, this is this is the thing. This is I not. I think it's wonderful that you guys yeah. did not did not the see the bed. Uh, 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 that was very nice. Very kind. This right here touched me spiritually. And it's not it's it's not about color thing. I know it's not about color thing, but I I can tell you. It just made me feel safe. Okay. Because you guys are very intimidating. Okay? Just 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 because it's intimidating. Because if I was a black woman standing amongst a group of white men, I would be intimidated. And I wanna thank you. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna have a good night, but I wanna thank you for everything and God bless. Alright, thank you. It was a wonderful experience. Seriously, it was. No problem. 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 No probl
She's a Christian woman who went to Judaism at one point, came back to Christianity, and uh, I think she's happy that she did I just that. appreciate all you guys. Like, I mean, this is wonderful, and I feel safe here. And you guys are great. And God bless you. Seriously. Appreciate it. Thank you. Matthew chapter five. Matthew chapter ten, verse five. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, "Go not into the way of the Gentiles." to any city of the Samaritans and to you not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah, and that's... One that's, more, one more, one more. And as ye go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Yeah. So that's what, that's what uh, we try to break down to her. And we have to do it uh, with, uh, with kid gloves, so to speak. Because we're in a time that the confusion of faces are going to come back, man. And if you being carnal, you could be casting away one of the Lord's elect, man. So you never know. That's why we have to deal with every person according to the spirit, man. If they come up humble, we got to deal with them according to the spirit because you could be carnal and not be doing the labor that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh wanted you to do, man, which is preach the gospel. It's not up to you to discern who's an Israelite and who's not. It's according to the word, man. Because the, the confusion of faith have to come back, man. According to prophecy, the Lord said it, it's going to happen. So as, as servants, as laborers, you got to be ready when you out here fishing to not throw a fish back just based off the scales, man. Because you never know, man. You got one up? You got one. I wanted to say this, man. The reason she found us so intimidating because you got the spirit of the Most High around us. The spirit of the Most High is intimidating. When you read, like, when you read Second Ezra, and um, it wasn't even the Most High, it was angels coming to Ezra speaking to him. Ezra died, they had to put his spirit back in his body. That's how intimidating the presence of the Most High is. So she's intimidated because the presence of the Most High is in this area. And you got young so-called black men with the spirit of the Most High on them looking very serious and intellectual and knowledgeable. That's why she was intimidated, man. And, and, all, and it's not just her. It's not because she's a white woman. Our people are intimidated by us. You see our people, and they cross the street and walk on that side because they don't want to deal with the spirit of the Most High because it's an intimidated spirit. Matter of fact, if you go to Exodus and Deuteronomy, when Moses, when, when the people said they went, they said, you know what, forget you, Moses. We want to talk to the Most High. I got it. Uh, I got it. All right, hold on, hold on. And they went before the mountain to talk to the Most High. And the damn world quaked. And thunder came out and lightning. And they said to Moses, you know what? We don't want to talk to the Most High. We good. Change your heart. Well, well, that's the same thing that happens here on a lesser level. People are intimidated by us because it's the spirit of the Most High that's on us. And the spirit of the Most High ain't a plan and joking spirit, man. It's a serious spirit. A, a very serious spirit, an intellectual spirit, man. And that intimidates people. Go ahead. This is Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20. For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Exactly. That's why you don't hear that name, Yahweh, being thrown around in the world. That's an intimidating name. Yahweh. Hold on, real quick. When, when, we, when we say Yahweh or Yahweh Shah, people look at us like we crazy. Because that name is intimidating. The name Yasha Allah. They rather say Israel because Yasha Allah is intimidating. Yahweh the intimidating. Banyamyan, intim intimidating, man. Go ahead, bro. This is uh, Psalms chapter 34, verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver it them. Right, so when we all out at camp, or whenever we about, the Most High Spirit is around us. Also angels are around us to protect us. Now the angel, like I said, when you read the prophets, whenever the angels came near them, they died, they got very scared. It wasn't a thing of, oh, it's an angel, yes, yes, yes. They got scared, a lot of times they died and the um, angel had to put their spirit back in their body because they were that fearful. You read in the book of uh, Second, um, 
You read a book of Maccabees about the angel. The angel came down and beat one man to the brink of death. When they came, they were very stern and fearful looking. And you have that in the presence of us when we are here teaching. But Malachi chapter 1, verse 14. But, <laughs> but cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. So that's why we say that name Yahweh, they ain't trying to say, they don't use that name. They don't want us using that name. That's why I'm telling you Yahweh is not the name. Yahweh Shah is not the name. Yashir Allah is not the name. Yahweh the Banyamyan or lawyer is not the name. Because that's intimidating, man. And two thirds of our people are counted as heathen. That's why they don't know the name either. It's dreadful among two, them too. That's why they stick to the names God and Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? This is Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. The Lord Yahweh Bashim Shai is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. So when the Lord, when, when the word the word is coming out and you have so many spiritual brothers amongst each other like that, you have electricity, a spiritual electricity going on right now, man. It's a it's a vibration, it's an energy that's being pushed out, man. Because Jake wanna be a king, Jake wanna be a priest, but it starts with the spirit, man. And the Lord is changing the spirit of a select few of our men to come back to their heritage. And through them, the whole nation is going to be established, man. This is Daniel chapter 12. It's starting at verse 9. And he said, Go thy way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and, and sealed till the time of the end. Verse 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried. But the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So the fact that brothers even understand what's being said is a blessing, man. Because there's some vessels that are too far removed to come back, man. Two-thirds of our nation are beyond, uh, beyond rehabilitation, man. Completely institutionalized in Babylon, man. There's no coming back for them, man. So the fact that you've received this understanding means that you have an opportunity, man, to get your life together, man. Your eternity together, your crown together. And it's all according to faith and, and, and works, man. Because the Lord requires the faith of, uh, of the saints, man. That's why, you, that's why sometimes the Lord will show chariots, man, but sometimes the Lord will just let you go, man. He said that uh, those that have not seen the sign seeketh for me, roughly paraphrasing, but the Lord not gonna give us signs on this side because it's about the faith, man. What Yahweh Shah said, uh, uh, what, what do he require of us? That we believe, man. And if you saw it, you didn't have you won't have to believe it. Because it's there in front of you to see it, man. This is Ezekiel chapter 9 and verse 4. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry. For all of the all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And through the spirit, what's happening is they're recognizing the spirit of life coming back into the nation of Israel. And the same dread they had in the ancient days, they're, they're regaining that. That's why I said in Revelation, great fear fell upon them when they saw this, man. That's why it's intimidating. The spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah is coming back in the spirit, in the bodies of the nation of Israel, man. All of that fun and playing games of the Negro, Latino, and Native Americans coming to an end, man. That's why you see brothers up here with serious faces, man. Because our condition is not a game, man. The state of our people is not a joke. Knowing the state of our people, dude, would you really go out here every weekend and, and, and continue the cycle, man? Have you no shame, bro? We've been destroyed as a nation and all our people want to do is party, man. That notorious B.I.G. party and bullshit spirit is going to get chopped down in this day, man. All that bullshit ain't going to cost you your life, man. Watch. This is a clean I'll bring it up real quick. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of the Most High, but they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. 
And, and like, the, Slucky, go ahead, go ahead. Huh? Like the brother was just saying. You see, even with this brother and all these other brothers saying what they're saying, there's men that's actually watching this video right now and they're not looking at it with a spiritual mind. So that's why they look at it like, you know, you're just a bunch of niggas, you know, with Bibles or whatever, you're not really grasping the spiritual aspect of this thing. Because the Most High has discerned you with that spirit. You know what I mean? Like how Shai said, you have not cho I have not chosen you. I'm sorry, you have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you. So this thing right here, like even when we're speaking, we know that the majority of the people are not paying attention to what we're saying. And as we know, it's like that because the Most High made it that way. It's been a snare to the, mo to the two thirds of uh, our people. I got a precept. I have a precept to back you up. All right. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3. The ox know of his owner, and the right. ass his master's grill. But Israel do not know, my people do not consider. Exactly. And that's because it's spiritually discerned, man. Right. Esau has taught the whole world to be carnal, man. At one point, all heathen nations had some sort of spirituality to them, man. Esau, with his wine, has turned the, the whole world carnal, man. That's why they can't discern things of the spirit. We over here playing real spiritual war games, man. Right. This ain't a joke. It looked like a joke to these people because we're living in a dimension above them, man. Right. In the spirit, man. Their spirit, their flesh uh, tells them what to do, man. Their whole life is moved by the pleasures of their flesh, man. Right. So natural. Exactly. Yeah, natural, man. That, that's why they're the carnal. That's why they can't discern the good and the evil, man. That's why they can't recognize a kingdom being established right now, man. This is Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, hair a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to his people. So the Lord made this like a jigsaw puzzle, man. Because the spiritual, the, the hopeful elect was going to put these pieces together, man. The Lord made this a national treasure, like the movie, man. Right. You got to go here. You got to go there. You got to put this piece together. You got to put this piece with that piece, man. If you can't, if you can't do that, you're not willing to get the treasure at the end of the uh, at the end of the race, man. That's why the Lord said precept upon precept, man. You got to take all of these pieces, and the brotherhood is a spiritual piece, man. The very thoughts in the very presence of brothers raise up brothers' frequencies, man. Right. And that's what we need. That's what we need in this life because the Lord is building us up for the day of evil, man. And it's going to be worse for the heathens. But we want to be established as much as possible in the house of Yahweh Bashim al to to withstand in that evil day, man. I got free some, huh? Jake put in overtime to get that money. You need to put in overtime to get that spiritual money, man. Because the Lord will reward your diligence with faith and understanding, man. The Lord won't forget your labor of love of giving brothers, giving brothers a word of encouragement. Even just the way you salute a brother could, could raise a brother frequency, man. Because you never know what each individual brother is going through on his day-to-day, -day, man. But something about camp, when you get all of that energy and all them angels that surround every brother in the same place, it's like a small sanctuary, man. Right. It's a small place where we established in hope, where we're reminded in the spirit that we have something greater coming, man. Because for six days out of the week, we're around nothing but wickedness and carnal people, man. And that's vexing, man. It's vexing to be around people that are completely controlled by their flesh, man. Try having a conversation with one of these people, man. The only thing they can talk about is Snapchat, Instagram, reality shows, Tinder, POF, you know what I mean? <laughs> nah, but, but for real, you can't deal with you can't deal spiritually with uh with the uh majority of these people out here. That's why they the multitude was made in vain, man. They they serve no purpose, man. Even the heathen nations have a purpose on this planet, man, and they're not serving their purpose, man. And because all of these people are carnal, they can't receive 
or, or discern the spiritual things that's happening right now. Right. They walk past the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Shah and scoff, man. Right. That's exactly what's happening. They walk they walk past the altar of Yahweh Bashim Shah and scoff. And it's death unto them, man. They're being put in a trick bag and they don't even know it. The moment you think negative of the altar of Yahweh Bashim Shah, there's a, a, a clockwork of events that's gonna take place and it's gonna end in your destruction, man. And that's how the power that we serve works, man. He ain't gonna let you hit the corner and then judge you. Nah, he gonna let you get comfortable. That's what he did with Esau. The Lord allowed the so-called white man to, to flourish, man, for centuries. Thomas Jefferson said, I, I, I fear if the Lord was just, man, because they were right in the midst of doing that wickedness. And when you do something wrong, them first couple days after you done did something wrong, you afraid. But then eventually, that fear wears off. And that's what the Haobashim Yahshua allowed to happen, man. Not these so-called white people walking around comfortable like everything is all peaches and cream. The Lord is the real get back gang, man. The Lord is the real body snatcher, man. When you really meditate that every event that happens that causes a loss of life is on your Haobashim Yahshua's consent, you better tighten up or get wiped out, man. You fear a man with a pistol, you need to be fearing the man that put the pistol in his hand. Death is gonna come in a strong way and the Lord's name is gonna be recognized in fear, man. Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm gonna start at verse seven. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Verse eight, for to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Right. To another faith by the same spirit, to another the gift of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kind of tongues, like you, to another the interpretation of tongues. Verse 11, but all these worketh that one and the self same spirit dividing every man severally as he will for as the body is one hath many members and all the members of that one body being many are one body so is also hamash slake is so also is hamashiach so that means every brother is a piece of the body of uh, of the spiritual body how about shimia shot man and a part of that every brother plays his part in it in the body man but there's the same reward for all, man, which is the kingdom. Can I get this last one out? Oh, you got it. Verse 13. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether be Salakia, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. And that's that's Israelites. Because the what was being established was the spiritual temple, man. And what was being stressed by Paul and the other apostles was that the, 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 the uh, spirit, spiritual time is, uh, is up now. Now we're going from carnal to spiritual, man. So you can't hold what you was holding against the Gentiles according to the old covenant. You can't hold that against them now. Shiloh's back. Now that Shiloh's here, he's established something new, man. And every brother in the body plays a part in promoting another part of that body, man. Without the blood vessels, you don't get you don't get the oxygen. Without the lungs, you don't get the oxygen to the blood. Every every piece of your body plays a part, which is why your body is being uh, the the spiritual body is being compared to a carnal. I keep going. Now. You got it. This is verse fourteen. For the body is not one member, but many. Verse fifteen. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. It. Is it therefore not of the body? That's spiritual, man. That's spirit. Because even Paul was breaking down that right. look. Even if you just a foot. Uh, King David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the kingdom of heaven than to divide the spoils with the proud, man. Because our reward is the same, man. Whether the Lord has given you this measurement or that measurement. Whether you're a hand in a uh, spiritual body or a foot. Whether you're a finger or a white blood cell. It doesn't matter because we all promote the same body, man. Verse 16. And if the heir shall say, because I am not the eye, am I not of the body? Is it therefore not of the body? 
If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where, Slaki, where were the smelling? Verse 18, but now had Yahweh set the members, every one of them, in the body, it has pleased him. So it pleased the Lord to put every brother that understands his truth and came back to uh, and came back home. It pleased him to do that, man, because every uh, brother in his truth serves a purpose in the body, man. Until you don't serve a purpose. That's why you look at Yahweh Shai's 12 disciples, they all came from different walks of life. Some dealt with money, some were fishermen, man. They all brought what they had, you know, to the table in the ministry, man. How to deal with this and how to deal with that, you know? That's, that's spiritual in its own. And, that, and that's how the Lord is teaching us the, uh, the brotherhood again, man. Because he's teaching us that even in these carnal bodies, you gotta practice and rehearse being spiritual. Understanding that whether your role is huge or not, that you're all a part of the same body and you're all, you all stand to get the same reward. You got brothers that speak, and it might be a brother that just hold a sign that gives spiritual power, that deliver you. Because the Lord balances scales, man. And the Lord loves plot twists, man. Knowing and understanding that, that the reward is promised to all the brothers as the kingdom of heaven is being developed, you gotta put yourself to the side. And a carnal man don't want you to do that. Your flesh don't want you to put yourself to the side and think about the overall goal, which is why the world is destroyed. Because everybody wants theirs. And they want to keep away anybody from theirs. Well, in this body, you have to be assimilated into the body and play your role, man. Because every brother's playing the role in this body, man. And the, and the Lord said every brother gets the same penny, man. Uh, the uh, parable about the laborers, that one that came in at the uh, the first hour, the right. second hour, the eleventh hour, right. and the Lord gave them all the same reward. Because it's his to distribute anyway, man. Right. And that's your brethren, man. We're not bringing stunting on niggas in the kingdom, man. Forget about it, man. We're not bringing that in the kingdom, man. Stunting on your own people. We're not bringing that in the kingdom. That's not going to be allowed in the kingdom of Yahweh by Shimei You got it all. Uh, Matthew. Matthew 5 and 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Con. Blessed are the humble, man. The humble in spirit, man. Because the Lord is going to give plenty to them because they've been faithful over little, man. Right. And that's what it's about. It's about maintaining your integrity with the crumbs that you may receive the entire dish, man. Mm -hmm. The Lord gave us a taste of what's to come. That's why he put in our spirits to receive this and get excited, man. Most people hear this word and it goes in one ear and out the other because they can't see that happening, man. The Lord has put it in your mind to understand what's coming and be excited for it, man. That's a crumb because the entire dish is when the whole earth know it, man. And you there in glory, man, because you saw the crumb and you stayed with it, man. The Lord looking for the ones that stand down right now, man. The Lord not interested in, in, uh, in, in faking the funk, man. The Lord is not interested in faking it, man. He's interested in the ones that's going to stay down through whatever, man. And that's our proving process right now. That's why it says, uh, if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him, man. If you're not willing to suffer, you don't deserve to take a sip of that wine with your house shot, man. Bottom line, man. And you not, man. You got to come back with everlasting shame and contempt until it wear off, man. Don't be in the fourth quarter playing games, man. This is the fourth quarter. This is our last opportunity, man. Run your race like it's the last race, because it is, man. This is Luke chapter 6, verse 21. Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of power. Right. So, bless. Blessed are us now, even though we're in a lower state because we've maintained our integrity, man. Like Job said, yet will I maintain my ways before him, man. Hey, the Christian. Um, I don't even think that means poor when you look it up. I, it means more like humble. What is that, 6 and 21? Come. Because what we're doing now, man, maintaining our integrity now is going to equal into glory, man, and wisdom.
Because the glory starts with the wisdom, man. Yahweh Shai didn't receive his glory until he took his sacrifice, man. And Luke, the 12th chapter, they told you that the one they ignorantly called Jesus said, I had to be baptized with a baptism. I had to take a loss before I got my W. The majority of our people want to get a W first. They don't want to take no L's, man. That ain't how the Lord works, man. Luke 6, This is Job chapter 1, and starting at verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before the Lord. Come and this spiritually this represents our entire well I say this represents the hopeful elect right now, man. Spiritually, this is a parable for the hopeful elect. It actually happened to Job, but we can apply that to the hopeful elect's life right now, man. This is Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of Yahweh came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, When comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down in it. And that's how Satan played the games, man. Satan don't just come up looking like a devil. He play off your mind, man. Oh. He play off you doing something wrong, knowing it's wrong, and still doing it, man. Because once you cross that bridge, the Lord got to uh, let what happens happen to you, man. Lest you repent. Verse 8 And the Lord said unto Satan Has thou considered my servant Job? See people look at this like a fairy tale man The Lord is, 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 is very grand in his design man Satan is not some little uh, mythical creature man Satan is everything that's, that's not right That plays off your mind man Everything that's going to equal up to your destruction And how it play out in your mind Whether right. you take of that cup or not man Right. And that's every day. Every day Satan is trying you somehow, some way. If it's a woman and you know she got a man and she keep getting on to you, that's Satan, man. Testing your integrity. Because that's what he did to Job, man. That there is none like him in the earth. A perfect and upright man. One that feared Yahweh and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear for naught? Thou not, Shalakia, hast not thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side? So, so the Lord is basically, uh, Satan is basically telling the Lord that the only reason that Job is serving you is because you gave him stuff. That's why in this walk we're not going to get stuff, man. Because we have to be proven. You got to show that you down for this before you can receive a reward for this, man. It happened to our uh, Job, and it's going to happen to us, man. I got a quick one for you. This is, um, this is Hebrews chapter, chapter 12, verse 6. This is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. From whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scoutereth every son who he, rece who he receiveth. Yeah. Well, Con, the Lord scourges every son that he receives, man. Because you have to prove yourself, man. And that's in everything in life, man. They didn't give, LeBron doesn't have the glory in name in this world for not. He had to prove himself on the court, man. How much more the spiritual battlefield, man? You want a name forever, but you don't want to get in the dirt and get dirty for it? You think the Lord gonna let you slide like that, man? No. Yeah, it's not gonna be easy, like that. Nay, he will not let you slide like that. Look what he did to the son, to the only begotten son, man. We have to go through this, man. But in the day of our prosperity, we're gonna forget all of this, man. The Lord said things that what he has for us, we can't even imagine, man. This is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7. If ye endure chastening, the Most High dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, 
then are ye bastards and not sons? And, and two thirds of our nation are bastards right now, man, because they don't want to endure the chastening that comes with being a, a son of the Lord, of right. the Lord, man. Right. They don't want to. They don't want to have to go and be changed to a lower state, man. Even though they don't really have an estate here, man. Jake ain't got nothing here, man. Jake, Jake look up to bo boxers, basketball players, and drug dealers, drug dealers and rappers that talk about stuff they probably ain't never been through. Uh. Jake is on a low level right now, man. And, and thank Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah for this truth, man. Because we're being elevated, man, ele elevated in the spirit right now, man. And you got millionaires, billionaire Jake that don't have the spiritual uh, bank account that we got right now, man. And their profits in our day-to-day -day walk, man. This truth ain't just about the heathens and the revenge, man. Don't get so caught up on the revenge that you forget to apply what you're learning and be more spiritual, man. Because our job is to ride with the training wheels on until the Lord take them off. It ain't about the destination, it's about the journey, man. The Lord could have got us there overnight if he wanted to, man. It's about the journey. Because anything that you had to work for, you're going to appreciate, man. When we in the kingdom and we sitting in immortal bodies without having to worry about death, you're going to think about all the lifetimes it took to get there. You're going to appreciate what you've been given, man. When you remember all the losses, man. When you remember all the people that look down on you, man. All the heathens that look down on you. All the women that you probably wanted in your life that the Lord kept away from you for the time appointed, man. You're going to look at all of that and you're going to appreciate the journey that the Lord put us through, man. We can't see it now because we still riding, our legs hurt, we tired. We want a little bit more water than we getting. But when you cross that finish line, it's not gonna matter, man. Two thirds of our people don't stand for anything, man. They don't they won't stand for their nation if you if you held a gun to their head, man. Right. They'd rather go to the spirit world. Jake wanna be deep when he ain't gotta be held accountable for his deepness. And Jake wanna be a a a, 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 a um a comfortable deep. Something that allow him to still be wicked, but still have some sense of righteousness, man. The Lord ain't the Lord ain't no gray area type of uh, entity, man. It's an either or with him, man. That's why a couple of our people being righteous didn't stop us from being getting uh, thrown into captivity. Right. It's either all or nothing with Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, and we're understanding that now. Come, come. Jeremiah, he think he's gonna go through this. Yeah, and the Lord had to check. The Lord told him, "Look, even you, even yourself, are gonna discontinue from your heritage." You know, the flesh probably probably made him like, "Damn, what I did? Yeah. Shit, I've been doing everything." Yeah, right. I was. I put a curse on these niggas. I gotta go into slavery with them. Yes, cause it's all or nothing, bro. And we're gonna appreciate the journey, even the uh, two thirds of our nation. They're gonna be uh, shameful. But they're gonna appreciate the journey that Yahweh Bashim out, and most importantly, the mercy that he had on them, man. That's why it's gonna be so uh, so much shame on them in the beginning, because the Lord had mercy on you, and you were being completely wicked, man. He held his hand out on the highways and byways, and you were going uh, free before eleven, trying to get hennied up to get you abroad out here, man. And that's gonna paint. That's gonna mess with your own conscience. Like, we're not bringing stunting on, 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 on brothers in the kingdom. So, it ain't gonna be a, a member of the elect saying, See, man, I told you to stay up out of the Roxies. And you ain't <laughs> it ain't gonna go down like that. You know, it's gonna be, if, and if it is, it's gonna be playful and spiritual, but it's not gonna be uh, Jake uh, flexing on his brother in, uh, in, a, in an attempt to harm him, man, or make him feel lower than he is, man. It's gonna be your own conscience eating you up. Like I said again, that's when it's gonna keep these Israelite women in check in the kingdom. Because their conscience is gonna fucking eat them up in the kingdom to, to really understand what the hell they 